Now, my perception, and you, you can agree or disagree with this, but it, it seemed like the loss to Fort Hayes State for a lot of people on Tuesday took – I, it seemed like a decent amount of fans from being fairly apathetic about what's going on with basketball to very upset in in an instant there. Uh, how I'll start with this. How slammed with angry emails and tweets were you on, on Tuesday after that loss? Well, I discovered something that was really good that night as I learned how to filter tweets. So I basically got rid of all the ones that don't follow me or that I don't follow. So I never show they never showed up on my <laughs> Twitter account. But uh but yeah, I mean, I've gotten emails, and 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 obviously, there's a lot of people frustrated with with Bruce and who was what the basketball program is. And you, you don't certainly like to lose the Division two school, and um, yeah. So I mean, I get it. I mean, I know they're frustrated, but uh, you know, it's you know they uh, and and I, even as a young team, a talented team, you, you know, you don't want to lose uh, to Fort Hayes. And hats off to Fort Hayes. I mean, they came in and they were fired up and they played well and they made shots and you know, we didn't you know we didn't play very well obviously that night so i understand their frustration and you know i read their emails and you know some i'll answer some i don't because some of them aren't the most pleasant emails to read so if it's like uh somebody told me that's what god created the delete button so i'm happy to delete them if they come in like they some of them have the last couple of days gene taylor is talking with me here on wildcat insider I, did that game to you cause you to rethink anything or or change your outlook on where the basketball program is headed? No, I mean obviously you know I didn't talk to Bruce much that night. Um, you know, just kind of to see where everybody is. And you know, I was in the locker room and heard what he said to his team. And I, you know, I think he's you know going to do everything he can to you know figure out how to get these guys playing on on the same page. You know, when I look at this team, obviously there's some talented kids out there, no question. Um, but I also, you know, know that there's also a lot of guys on this that never been on the floor before. And you know, again, I'm not making excuses. But the reality is that you know, normally you get to practice with them all summer, and you get a, a team like this to come in and 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 prepare all summer long and get to work together when you've got you know basically almost a whole new team um and they haven't had a chance to do that and then once they got into their season they were missing players uh they weren't even able to play five on five and again those may sound like excuses but that's the reality of, of what we're living in and you know uh you, you you can't expect teams to be in mid mid-season form right now so for me to make some sort of judgment of where the basketball program is would be really unfair to everybody do you view, and I, I know we've talked about this in the context of the football season and then where it's wound up, I mean, do you view this year generally because of that, the youth, COVID, and not having as much time to play and the disjointed nature of the season, do you view it as kind of a free pass this year because of that? Well, I don't know. You know, I don't know if I'd call it a free pass. I mean, I'm still evaluating, and, you know, you obviously, in a team like this, you want to see them get better as the year goes along, and – you know, certainly hope, and there's maybe you know there's going to be indication that you hope that's the direction that they go. So, you know, but again, I we're uh, going to sit down with Chris and say, okay, you know, where are we? What do we have coming in? What's you know, what's your plans? You know, for the spring and all those kind of things in terms of, you know, where do we need to get better? Um, you know, maybe some things that might be obvious. Uh, in some cases, it may not be, but. Uh, you know, so I'll do that with with Chris once we get through. You know, if we go to a bowl game and and everybody kind of gets a chance to take their breath after the holidays, and you know, we'll sit down and do that. And and I'll you know talk to Bruce kind of as the year goes along, just to kind of see where the team is and what he what he wants to uh, try to get accomplished with them. And then at the end of the year, have the same you know have a similar conversation of like, okay, how what do we need to keep doing you know to get better and make the next step? And so. So it's not necessarily a throwaway year, but there's going to be a lot more leeway than there is in a normal year, no question. Gene Taylor is talking with me. Uh, I know I won't even pretend that there aren't some obvious parallels here to the situation right now and why I asked this question, but I'm also curious just from a general standpoint, as an athletic director, how much do you let the fan opinion, the general fan sentiment influence your thoughts on where something's going, when to make a change, if it's time to make a change? Like, is there a point where there's enough fans upset where it does really affect it, or are you totally abstaining from any of that in your decision-making? 
I try not to let that enter into it. I mean, I've been in this business long enough that I feel, you know, based on, you know, conversations with uh, my internal staff and the people that care about the program and the president, and that's where the decisions will be made. And um, I don't, you know, I certainly value and understand how important our fans are. And, you know, I love their passion and I love how much they care and, and how much they want to be successful. And I get that. But for me to, you know, make decisions about a program based on, you know, a fan base that when I first got here didn't want Bruce to be here either. And you know, then we go to Elite Eight and win a Big 12 championship. And, you know, <laughs> so uh, if I would have reacted to the fans when I first got here, you know, we may not have had that situation happen. So, you know, I certainly pay attention to it, but that's not what's going to cause me to make a decision one way or the other. I know the last time we talked, and it, it seems like just everything I have heard since then was indicating that you guys are still expecting to play in a bowl game. Has anything changed on that front with the football team? No, no, not at all. Um, tomorrow is our Big 12 AD's call. We'll probably get some more clarity as to you know where the bowls are. Uh, I think as of right now, none of the Big 12 bowls have opted out. I think they're all still planning on hosting. You know, if you do the math, um, assuming you know the winner of the Big 12 championship is going to go into one of the New Year's Six bowls, um, you know, then they're going to need six more teams, and we would be sitting at that six team. And if you you know go down the progression of who picks where, it's leaning towards the the Texas Bowl, the one that's played there at SMU's campus. But um, I also know that there's a potential, and there's some conversation that the Big Twelve may get two teams in a in a New Year's Six Bowl, and then that would move everybody up, and we may you know, be short a team. So, you know, all indications are you know coaches evaluating kind of where we are as a team and. Uh, you know, we're still doing COVID protocol, so as long as we're we're good there, you know, all those things all will play into that into that as a decision. But uh, right now, we're still expecting to have a bowl option for us available. Now, I don't know if this is common practice. I know you hear of it sometimes in certain situations, but will this be a situation where if if you do get offered a spot in a bowl game, the team, the players, actually get a a vote, a say in whether or not you're going to do it? You know, I think that's something that Chris is going to, you know, kind of evaluate uh, from a couple of different angles. Uh, one is where we are from COVID and, and just numbers situation. Obviously, you know, it's been a long year for everybody, and, and you know, where's everybody mentally? Are they do they want to keep playing? And I think you know, there's probably a lot of guys that do, and there's probably some that don't. Um, so he'll that's what he's kind of using this week for is just to keep continuing to practice the younger guys, give the, the veterans, you know, rest and and then just kind of see where we are. We'll have to make a decision before a bowl selection is made if we, you know, if, you know, if for instance, you know, something were to, you know, go wrong or, you know, all of a sudden if we did get a COVID run or something, I don't know. Um, but, and there's also injuries, you know, there's postseason kids that have, you know, been putting off minor surgeries that they could probably, you know, Use just to get ready because you, know, you, you have to. Some, at some point, you have to say, okay, what's more important? Getting ready and to a point where we come back in the spring and we're a hundred percent and we got a full team, or is it playing one more game? And and I think those those will be all parts of the conversation to have here in the next couple of days. Okay, so it does, and I'm that was basically where I was going with my next question. It does sound like this is still a decision that would have to be made on the football front as to whether or not to to do it for sure. Yeah, I, I think there's, again, like it's a lot of factors. Uh, we're still, like I said, doing the COVID testing and where we are going to be there. I'm assuming, you know, those are going to be fine, but you just, you know, the kids have been off for a few days, so you just never know. And then, um, you know, how many seniors are going to want to, you know, we've already, Briley's already committed to, you know, not coming back, so he's obviously not going to be available. So, you know, um, where are we with tight ends and where are we with injuries and where are we with, you know, not like we finished with the with our squad being fully healthy and ready to play you know, kind of towards the end of the season here. So, uh, And then we had injuries in the Texas game. So I think all those things are going to be a, a factor in whether or not we're going to even be able to put the, the team together. But if we can, we're going to, you know, we're certainly going to play. Gene Taylor is talking with me. I, you know, I, I have to chuckle when I read from the Big 12 that it's still possible, I guess, that Texas could win the Big 12 championship game, right? Because they're on standby <laughs> if Oklahoma and Iowa State can't play. Like, how 
how weird of a position is everybody in right now where Texas has to essentially be on standby for this thing on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I guess if you're Texas, you're probably looking at both Baylor or um, Baylor. I mean, uh, uh, Oklahoma and, and Iowa State film in case you have to play one of them. Uh, you know, we made that decision as ADs that we weren't just going to, I think there's a couple of conferences that aren't going to play the championship game. They're just whoever is left standing gets to be named the conference champion. We we agreed that we thought it was important to play the game and in order to do that. So, yeah, Texas is sitting there probably looking at both Iowa State and Oklahoma and trying to prepare for them. Uh, obviously, they played them both already, so it's probably not that big a deal. But, um, yeah, I mean, it could be – I'm sure they're going to need to know here probably in the next day or so. I guess they'll probably do their testing tomorrow and have answers to that by Thursday. So they'll know if they're going to be able to – well, they, be the one who's not going to be able to play the game, but they haven't played the last two weeks, so I think they're probably in good shape. Well, so does that mean that you're not telling Chris to to watch the Oklahoma and Iowa State film just in case it gets down the, yeah. the ladder to like <laughs> seventh place? <laughs> I think I think we're probably pretty secure in us not getting down that far in, in terms of, uh, of of teams not being. But you know, it's interesting that some games didn't take place last week, but that. You know, I'm going to keep that opinion to myself. So, uh, you know, <laughs> conveniently COVID-related uh, cancellations last week, but whatever. Yeah, well, I, uh, I I catch your drift. I catch your drift, Gene. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate the time as always. Uh, good to talk to you, and uh, we'll do it again soon. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.